Okay, so today we're going to start talking about energy. Um, we use the word energy a lot, you know. I'm, I've got an energy drink right here. Um, but in science, we have a particular definition of, of what energy is. Energy is the capacity to do work. So then that leads to the question of what is work? Work is defined as the action of a force through a distance. So we have this illustration here of a man pushing a box. He's exerting a force on the box and he's exerting that through a distance. If he just stands and pushes on the box but doesn't actually move it, technically that is not work. Okay? So it's through a distance. No, that's right, that doesn't work. Um, so there are different kinds of energy, and just like we classify matter, we classify these different types of energy. So the two main uh, categories of energy are kinetic energy and potential energy. So kinetic energy is associated with the motion of an object. Any object that is moving has kinetic energy. We talked yesterday about the solid state and what the particles are doing in the solid state. Are they still or are they moving? They're moving. They're not moving relative to each other, but they're vibrating, just like you guys are all breathing, right? You are not perfectly still. If you were, you would be dead, right? You have to move to be alive. So everything has some kinetic energy. It's, it's associated with motion. The other category of energy is potential energy. And this is um, associated with either the position of an object or its composition. So here we have an illustration of this 10 kilogram weight sitting teetering at the top of this building. This weight has significant potential energy. It is elevated above the surface of the ground. It's in an unstable position. If you give that a nudge and knock it off balance, it's going to fall, right? Up here, it does not have very much kinetic energy. It's just got the wiggling kinetic energy of the particles inside of it. When that weight falls off the building, the potential energy it had initially begins to change into kinetic energy as the uh, speed of that object falling increases. As it gets lower and lower, its potential energy is less but it's moving faster. And so we have energy that can transform between these different forms, kinetic and potential. Um, another kind of energy is thermal energy. Thermal energy is actually a kind of kinetic energy. Thermal energy is associated with the temperature of an object. So if we think about a solid and the particles are vibrating if that, if that solid is warmer, if it has a higher temperature, the particles are vibrating more. So that's like, you know, cold, solid state of students is you're all like literally chilling in your chairs. You're like, yeah, whatever, right? And if the temperature of the solid state of students warms up, now everybody's just kind of antsy. They're fidgeting. Maybe somebody's really rocking out and having a nice little chair dance or something. You know, just a lot of movement in that stationary place. That's thermal energy. So what happens to the energy that that weight had, it started out with a lot of potential energy, it falls off the building, as it goes down its kinetic energy increases and then it hits the ground and now it doesn't have that potential energy anymore and it's also not moving so the kinetic energy is gone, where did the energy go? Thermal energy. So the energy, when that weight collides with the ground, that collision causes the particles both in the, in the weight and in the ground to move. And it gives them a lot of vibrational energy, thermal energy. So if it was large enough, you could actually go feel it and you could see that the temperature was warmer. Usually the temperature change is not significant, and so you, can't, you don't notice that when there's a collision, there's heat that's given off. But that's where the energy goes. Any questions? So 
So the total energy that an object has is its kinetic energy plus its potential energy. So I mentioned the law of conservation of mass. There's also a law of conservation of energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. We can transform energy from one form to another. Energy can flow from one object to another. But the total quantity of energy in the universe is constant. You can't create energy. You can just transform it from one form to another. Objects that have high potential energy tend to be unstable like something balanced at the top of a building. That's high potential energy, and the likelihood is that you nudge that a little bit and it's going to fall. Something with low potential energy is stable. It's hard to fall off the ground, right? It's hard to fall off the ground. We're missing a chair. Here, take this one. There should be five on that side. So with, when you've got low potential energy, you're more stable. So thermal energy is a form of kinetic energy. And then there's a, a special form of potential energy called chemical energy, which obviously we're interested in chemistry. This is also really due to position. But now it's not the position like above the ground. It's the position of the charged particles that make up the atoms and molecules in that substance. And so energy can be stored within a compound. Compounds with high chemical energy are unstable. So gasoline, TNT, dynamite, those sorts of things have high chemical potential energy. The energy is stored within the molecules, how those charged particles are related to each other. You have some gasoline vapor, and it's unstable, a little spark, and poof. It burns, right? It's unstable. So in a chemical or a physical change, energy is conserved. We see that systems with high potential energy um, being unstable, they tend to change in a direction that lowers their potential energy. And so when they lose potential energy, what happens to that energy, it doesn't just disappear, it has to go somewhere. And so that gets released into the surroundings. There is useful energy and there's not so useful energy. And anytime you have a transition of one type of energy into another, um, we think of it as losing energy and yet it's not really lost, it's just not useful anymore. So if you think about the engine in your car, regular combustion engine running on gasoline. Does all the energy from the gasoline go into moving the car forward? No. I think we all know better than after the car's been running for a while to open the hood and stick your hand on the engine, right? Why shouldn't you do that? It's hot. Where does that heat come from? They don't put a heater into the engine to make it hot. That's a byproduct of transforming the chemical potential energy of the gasoline into kinetic energy of the car moving forward, the cylinders moving up and down. When you do that transformation, some of the energy is lost, not gone, but lost to usefulness as heat. Well, um, thermal energy is the motion of particles, okay? So the only time that atoms and molecules are perfectly still would be at zero degrees Kelvin, or zero Kelvin, absolute zero, which is not really a possible temperature. It's more theoretical. So in the sense that all normal things are above zero Kelvin, everything has thermal energy, yeah. You could have thermal kinetic energy without the movement potential energy. Yeah. Although, you know, things do become a little bit relative and physics kind of gets into this. So, you know, my cup is sitting there on the bench. Is it moving? It's not moving to, in relevance to the, you know, in relation to the bench. But the earth is moving, right? 
we are actually traveling at a high rate of speed as the Earth spins and goes around. So in that sense, yeah, everything has kinetic energy. So here's an illustration of a vehicle, a car. And so you put gas in the car. The molecules in the gasoline are unstable. They have high chemical potential energy. In the engine, combustion occurs, and we transfer some of that chemical potential energy into mechanical kinetic energy. The movement of the pistons in the car gets transferred to the, the axle and all those good things and causes the wheels to move. In that process, heat is released in the engine, and we also have exhaust coming out. The exhaust coming out of your car, those are the gas um, combustion products of the gasoline. The molecules in the exhaust have lower chemical potential energy because when they undergo that chemical change in the engine, they release some of their energy and it gets used in the engine. And so the chemicals that are left have lower potential energy. They are more stable. So we know that gasoline needs to be handled carefully or you can have an explosion, right? The exhaust coming out of your car, you know, no, you shouldn't be breathing it exclusively or anything like that, but it's not going to explode. It has very low potential energy. It's very stable. So some of the released energy as that combustion occurs gets transferred, harnessed to do work. Energy is the capacity to do work. The work is done when the car moves forward. The force is exerted moving the car forward. So any questions about energy?